Immediately after account creation, you'll notice a few things. One, that we've already validated and verified the primary email associated with the account. So you see the green check here. Note that the publisher identity has not yet been verified, so you see the red X associated with publisher identity. Notice that in this view, you have the new tab, My Products. Clicking on My Products brings up the developer dashboard for this account. Notice that in this case, both primary email and publisher identi identity have been verified, and the account status is active. If account status is not yet active, most likely because publisher identity has not yet been verified, you will be able to enter application information, but you won't be able to submit the application for certification until this step is complete. Now let's go through the process of adding a product. Under the Add Product button, I have the choice of submitting either an application or a widget. Let's choose Application. Under the Application Submission process, we have six steps. The first is providing general information about the application. On this screen, you'll see Product Name, which is the application name which will be listed in the catalog. The operating system, Windows Mobile 6.x, includes applications for Windows Mobile 6.0, 6.1, and 6.5. You can only select one platform for, per submission. To select the other platform, or to target the other platform, you'll need to submit an additional application submission. Next, enter the version number of your application. Next, select the market in which you'd like the application to be distributed. Important here to understand that markets are a combination of country plus language. For example, in the United States, I can target either the English or Spanish market. You can select only one market for this initial application submission. Following certification, you will be able to submit your application for additional markets. The next box is Submission Method. We will leave this field as Web. Once we've completed entering the general information, we'll hit Next. The next step in the process is entering product description information. Here, you'll enter the product description text, which will be used to describe your product within the Windows Marketplace catalog. The on-device catalog description is limited to a maximum of 500 characters and will appear to describe your product on the phone. The web catalog description is limited to a maximum of 2,000 characters and will appear to describe your product on the Marketplace website. The next section is product features. These items will be used to display a bulleted list of features of your application within Windows Marketplace. Features will be displayed in the order provided. At least three features are mandatory. In this third step, we'll provide product information for your marketplace product. The first component is the application binary. This binary must be a CAB file under 10 megabytes in size. Use the Browse button to navigate to the location of the cabinet file and add it to the field. File size must be less than 10 megabytes. Important to note that the CAB file name cannot have any spaces or special characters. The file uploaded here must be an application or widget. It can't be a theme or ringtone or anything else on the prohibited application list, even if it's contained within a CAB file. You do not need to code sign your CAB file. If the CAB file is signed, we will need to break the signature and apply a new marketplace-specific code signing signature. Once you've chosen the location for the binary, click Upload. Note the successful upload of the CAB file. The next field is Release Notes. These will not appear in the catalog and are used solely for the developer's reference. The next section is Support Information. This is used to help customers contact you for support. It will appear in the Support section for your ap application in the catalog. A support email is required. Optional components are a support URL and a support phone number. The next component is the legal URL. If you have a privacy policy, additional in-user license terms, or special terms of use for your application, please enter the URL here. If you enter nothing, your application will be subject to the standard EULA provided for all marketplace applications. Please note that none of the legal terms you specify here can restrict any of the rights or provide less rights than those provided under the standard in-user license agreement. In the next section, you'll specify the digital signature requirements for your application. All applications that are distributed through Marketplace will be code signed. Thus, our earlier comment that it's not necessary for you to provide a cab that has already been code signed. In this section, you'll choose a signing method, either privilege mode, which will require you to answer additional questions and may require additional time to complete certification, or normal mode. If you have a CAB file that supports both pro and standard devices, make sure to select privilege mode for the standard application. Here you can see the additional questions required when you select privilege mode digital signing. You'll need to provide the specific privilege execution mode APIs 
resources, and registry entries that the application requires. You'll need to verify that your application meets the Microsoft Privilege Certificate technology requirements with this checkbox. You need to document any exceptions to the Microsoft Privilege Certificate technology requirements. And with this checkbox, assert that you've tested the application to ensure that it does not harm the device, network, or subscriber. During step four, we will enter the product artwork to be associated with your product. We need to provide both icons and screenshots. Once each of the four required icons has been selected, click Upload. The blue text indicates successful completion of the icon uploads. Please note, submitting the right size icons is a requirement to pass certification. Make sure that the icons submitted meet the requirements before submitting your application for certification. If you have further questions about the icon requirements, click the link at the top of the page to go to a blog post that provides additional help. The next section is submission of the screenshot. Screenshots are required to be PNG files. We'll accept white or black borders. For highest fidelity, we recommend no borders whatsoever. At least one catalog screenshot is required. It's possible to upload as many as five. For the Manage Code section, if your application requires the presence of the .NET Compact Framework, please specify the version required. For native applications, this is not necessary, but for managed applications, choose either .NET CF 2.0 or .NET CF 3.5. Application binaries should not contain the redistributable components of the .NET Compact Framework. Please refer to the application submission criteria for more information, but regardless of whether or not the version of .NET CF your application requires is on the device, you need not package it within your CAB file or redistribute it. The next section is device requirements. Here it's important to check all device attributes that your application requires. Users with devices that do not meet these requirements will not be able to download your application. The next step is screen resolutions. Resolutions that are grayed out are those that are not supported by the platform that you selected. In this case, 176 by 220 or 440 by 240. However, it's important also to uncheck any resolutions that are not supported by your application. Make sure that your application works on each resolution selected, otherwise your application will fail during the certification process. Choosing a primary category resets the list of available subcategories. Here you have an opportunity to choose a price for your product from the list of available mobile operator price points. These price points are specific to the market that you have selected for your application. In this case, they range from $0.99 cents to $19.99 or free. If you wish to select a different price point, select Choose Your Own Price. In this case, users will only be able to pay for your application using a credit card. If I were to enter a price that did not end in $0.99, cents, you'll see that the price point will be rejected. When I correct the price point to end in $0.99 cents as suggested by the error, you'll see that the submission is accepted. It's important to remember that for VAT countries, the price that you choose includes applicable taxes, and those will be deducted before any revenue share is calculated. The price that you choose applies only to the market you selected. You'll have the opportunity to choose the price for other markets when you submit your application for certification in those markets. Remember, you receive 70% of the net revenue regardless of payment method. Net revenue here means after taxes, but regardless of whether or not the application is billed via a mobile operator billing network or a credit card payment, you'll receive 70% of net revenue. Also important to remember that prices can be changed at any time via the My Products tab on the developer portal. Now that we've chosen a price, it's time to submit the application. Here we see the confirmation screen for submission of this application. Here you note the current balance of certification events. Certification credits do not expire. To submit your product for certification, it's important to understand that your account will be debited for one of the certification events you received during registration. A complete test pass will be conducted using the application submission criteria as basis for the testing. A digital signature will be applied using the preferences selected during the product submission process. Once you've submitted your application for certification, it will appear on the dashboard in the pending section. If our submission was unable to be published, we would receive an email notification. Finally, remember to check the developer portal to monitor and check application status.